Ladies and gentlemen, Nini Wasera. I wish to dedicate this session to the late, great Olwenya Maina, one of our most exceptional performers, whom we have lost as a result of the ills that plague our industry. An industry that is rife with exploitation, sexual harassment, injury, and violence that leads to post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, and anxiety. Yes, that is what we as Kenyan actors deal with on a regular basis. The acting scene as Kenya is more or less a full-scale battle zone. After 25 years of performing as an actor in Kenya, I want to personally throw my hands up in despair. But the words of Winston Churchill bring me back to my truth. Never give up on something you can't go a day without thinking about. My name is Nini Washera, and I can't go a day without thinking of acting. It is my life. I am grateful that I stand here to speak on behalf of the actors and actresses in Kenya. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, peers within the acting community, the Cabinet Secretary for Youth, Sports and the Arts, the Honorable Ababu Namwamba EGH, and every single one of you who took the time to be here with us today. Actors are individually battling for industry changes, but we need to question whether we want to continue these separate battles or focus our energies on demanding a form of shared government and industry cooperation. One that protects the rights of actors, acknowledges that acting is indeed a form of free labor, and stand together to demand that standards and guidelines of best practices are followed by all and for all within the industry. We need to take the less me and the more we approach. There are a myriad of challenges we are currently facing. Insufficient support structures, inadequate measures for artistic rights and intellectual property rights enforcement, the lack of policy guidelines or even a legal framework for the protection of actors in the industry. Our labor laws state that every worker has a right to fair compensation and reasonable working conditions. Fair wages are a rumor in this industry. Despite all the economic growth and all the progress we have made in regards to economic growth, that has not led to financial gain for actors. To put it very simply, the Kenyan actor basks in the glory of fame, but there is no accompanying fortune. In Kenya, we don't have the, any protections in place to safeguard us from producers cutting actors' rates. There are no industry standards and guidelines on equitable incomes for actors. And in attempting to negotiate better deals, we are hit with a semantically saturated, oh, this is a low budget production. <laughs> The influx of new media and streaming services should be a plus for us. However, we are facing a different form of colonization. These streaming platforms provide unethically low budgets that dribble down to actors in the form of slave wages. The average salary for a leading actor today is between 5,000 and 20,000 per episode. Why? Okay, let's put this into income earned per year. In 2021, one leading actor made about 700,000 on a three-month contract for a show airing on a major American-based streaming platform. Unfortunately, that actor hasn't worked since 2021 because everyone says she's too expensive. In 2022, a leading actor made 300,000 from a three-month contract on a leading African-based platform. That actor hasn't worked since. She's too expensive. In 2023, another actor made a measly 80,000 from a two-month contract
for a show airing on the same leading African-based platform. And that has been it. Our wages are not consistent, they are not reasonable or equitable, and in our ongoing conversations as, as actors, the issue of financial return continues to come up. We are not getting a return on what we have invested in ourselves, in our training, in our expertise. I urge you, Mheshimiwa, as our cabinet secretary, to have your ministry research the rates that are permissible in 13 episodes and 250 episode telenovelas in other parts of the world. Assist us in fixing a minimum wage structure for the work of actors and guarantee that this minimum wage is fixed by government and subject to change according to our social economic conditions. Timely payments, as Maghetto stated, are a huge challenge with waiting periods of up to 90 days and the amounts are not paid in full. They are prorated over a two to four month period. So what can be done to ensure that payment timelines are honored and that we are not suffering constant financial hardship? Our contracts are another concern. They are created to favor the broadcasters and the producers. One example is the notorious in perpetuity clause inserted into every single one of our contracts and it has become standard practice. In perpetuity means the producer or the broadcaster has the right to use my name, my image, my voice, my likeness as you have seen on the videos that have been played here of actors, right? They have that right to use my image, my likeness, forever. Yeah? This should be illegal. It is predatory. It is abusive. It means the actor will die in poverty. And it means that they will receive no royalties or payment for that work that was used or if it's shown in another part, another part of the world, or if the series is resold to another broadcaster. Forever! In practical terms, right? That actor, who earned 700,000 in 2021, who hasn't worked since, right? As, as a one-off payment for a series on a key global streaming platform, We'll see the, air, the show aired for two to three years. We'll see a picture up on billboards and TV screens all over the world. That platform, that producer, will continue to benefit financially from repeated broadcasts and licensing deals, and the actor will not make a single shilling. Now, Let's just put this into perspective, right? If a manufacturer creates a product, it has intellectual property rights that are protected under trademark law, and its owner has the tools to enforce their rights against unauthorized use by others. True, right? Mustn't an actor, a person, a human being, therefore be entitled to the same rights Actors must have intellectual property rights and protect against the misuse of their name, image, and likeness for profit. It is our moral right and it is not transferable under the Beijing Treaty. If any individual, any producer, any company attempts to use my image for its own profit, I demand that I must be able to profit as well, and if not, to pursue legal action. I am therefore urging you, Honorable Cabinet Secretary, and your ministry, sir, our ministry, to assist us in curbing illegal appropriation of the only tool I have. It's the only tool I have. My face, my voice, my image, my likeness. That is what I have as an actor. Let these gifts that we harness and inherently share 
with Kenya and the world be a blessing instead of being a curse. The current state of welfare in our industry is abominable. Welfare means various services, facilities, amenities that are provided to workers for their betterment. These should be provided willingly by producers, but in Kenya, it seems we need legislative provisions to compel them to provide these amenities. Lack of proper security on locations, with the alleged incidents of robbery at gunpoint and rape, either on location or in transit to and from location, it is a clear indication that our producers are not taking into account our safety. Our health is also being threatened with a lack of adequate sanitary and hygienic facilities. This provision is unquestionable and it must be at the top of the list in taking care of your staff. But this is overlooked on a lot of our sets. <laughs> catering. Catering, food, whether 18 hours, whether 20 hours, that must be an obvious part of our welfare. Yet producers are not taking precaution when subcontracting food and beverage persons for their teams, with increasing incidents of food poisoning on set, right? It's detrimental to our health and our productivity. The working conditions that actors experience could be termed as brutal. Long working hours with no rest, under unbearable weather conditions, covering an impossible number of scenes to save costs for the producer and to meet unreasonable timelines. No overtime, no sick leave, not being allowed to get pregnant. to attend to family and children's needs, including breastfeeding. If we demand fair treatment, we are faced with hostility, labeled drama queens, difficult, sometimes fired from our shows, and blacklisted, which means other producers won't hire us because we're difficult. What can our ministry do to ensure fair working conditions for actors? In more developed film and TV industries, it has been proven and research backed that actors experience anxiety, stress, and depression at higher levels than the general population. And that many rely on substance abuse to cope with the pressure and burden of their roles. There are associations between long working hours, depression, and mental health. Here in Kenya, our mental well-being is completely disregarded. The irregular schedules disrupt our sleep cycles, leading to exhaustion and fatigue. The emotional demands needed to depict the characters we play leads to exhaustion, depression, and anxiety. The financial instability causes financial stress and anxiety. We need support from labor policymakers to put structures in place that regulate hours of work per week. And to perhaps consider, consider doing an assessment on the state of mental health for actors and to enforce that every production provide an on-set medic. Yes. Yes. Where do I go if I experience abuse or mistreatment? Who can I talk to? There is no place, no office that helps us handle our complaints of bullying, harassment, sexual abuse, or any form of mistreatment. So what can the ministry do to regulate this? 
I would suggest, we would suggest, enforce in law a welfare officer much similar to an HR person to be assigned to every production. This policy must ensure that every report that is investigated is investigated without prejudice and this person must be above the producer. So how can we bridge the gap and provide a vision for the future of the film and TV industry for actors? We would politely request you, sir, as our cabinet secretary, or someone assigned to you to randomly visit the numerous productions and experience the state of working conditions, to speak frankly to cast and crew about their experiences. We would ask as well, one simple question. How can you help uplift the professional and personal lives of Kenyan actors? And some ideas from us would be to put the resources of your office into monitoring the film industry as you have the power to engage industry stakeholders and to demand that results are forthcoming for the advancement of our industry to create an independent regulatory body that ensures standards and guidelines are being upheld, to create codes of conduct that are adhered to in relation to health, safety, and the well-being of actors and actresses. Uh, we would also suggest an investigation on the current state of our contracts and a system put in place that allows the actors to contest the illegal signing off of our rights. <laughs> to enforce audits with the intention of compelling producers to share the profits they make with actors and induce back payments for all the parties involved in production. I would like to conclude my statements with encouragement to my fellow actors to stay passionate, be persistent, and proactive in pursuing your careers. And finally, to our Maheshimiwa and our current government, your agenda is to work towards promoting youth affairs in Kenya. We are appealing for this industry to be structured and regulated so that our future generations don't face these same challenges. And for the veterans, Seize this culture that sees actors sink deeper and deeper into destitution as we get older, leading us to die in poverty, just as the great Benson Wanjao did, a.k.a. Mze Ojuan. Thank you for your time and for generously giving me your time.